Service operator, which service do you require? Um, please, ambulance, I, I don't know. Okay, try to stay calm for me. What's happened? I found a body. Oh God, I think she's dead. It's a week since I was murdered. Okay, Sarah and Richard come first. And four teams of amateur detectives started to look for my killer. She was expecting a visitor. Yeah. She was pregnant. She was pregnant. Each with their own ideas of what happened that night. We've got this. Rox and Dot thought Freddy was the prime suspect. I have had involvement with drugs in my younger days, yes. Especially when they saw his criminal record. Arrested on suspicion What's of attempted murder. But they couldn't make it stick. I am taking you off this investigation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Something I didn't tell you about. Alicia inflicted the injury on me. Chrissy and Caroline had a strong case against Alicia. Look, Charlie's death has nothing to do with the land development. It wants it to do with that. Do you want me to do your job for you? I don't know. Find out. But couldn't get her to crack. I am going to take you off the investigation. OK. If either of the remaining teams can unravel the mystery created by Ian Rankin, they can claim a £50,000 reward. We haven't let him do a runner, have we? It's not about guesswork. It's not about theories. It's about evidence. What did happen that night? Who came to the manse? I could hear Charlie talking to someone someone was there. And why did they want me dead? We just need to sort of figure out who that could possibly be. I used to love waking up to the sounds of the island. My favourite place in the world. For some on Hirsha, life is slowly returning to normal. But not for the detectives. So We're like still just relying on all these different accounts from different theories. At headquarters, two teams remain, and only one of them will get the chance to identify my killer. The other will be taken off the case today. OK, let's go through our potential suspects. Jean Grant. We think they've got some sort of relationship, assuming that they're new partners. Um, she openly lied to us over a number of pieces yeah. of information. So what do we know about Hamish so far? He come across as someone who's just heartbroken. Yeah, exactly, a broken man, literally. Could you just repeat where you went again, please? Right. I took a bottle of whiskey and I walked up to watch the sunset at the standing store. Freddy, as far as his alibi, he was at the meeting talking about different people selling different bits of land. He left about an hour after the meeting finished, headed home, and then went back to the pub where he claims to have offered Tony some sort of financial incentive. Here's the proposal, 30K for the package. He then claims to have driven home the whole roots of us being here is the fact that you've got grandfather and father of both yeah. detectives. We want to show them what we can do and also show our wider family, you know, our family is about 50 odd people when they're all together. Um, and it's showing them that we can do something like this and do yeah. it together. Exactly. Logan Corey, we know he could be mixed up in drugs. He's got um, grease print and a footprint at the man's house. We don't really know enough about him yet. He's definitely our top guy we want to investigate. Yeah. Nick and Andrew have gone to see Ishbel Corey. Hi, Mrs. Corey. We're just wondering if we could stop by and just ask a couple of questions. Is that OK? Absolutely. Brilliant. They want to learn more about Logan from his mother. Um, I've just made a pot of tea. Would you like one? Oh, we'd love one. Thank you. I would say that our style up until now has probably reflected what we've watched on TV and what we've seen in movies as to like detectives go in, they're very hard line, they're very, they just go in and get the job done. I think we did verge into 70s cop quite often 
when we maybe should have been a bit more, you know, softly, softly, we <laughs> sort of thought we could just go in and not rough Bull them up. our way yeah, through, like... yeah. Does anybody take sugar? Uh, just as it is, it's perfect. Thank you so much. Hello, baby. Hi, baby. <laughs> you having a nice time with Grandma? We've got a two-year-old daughter, and she is just just a bundle of joy. Like I was scared at first because I'm thinking I don't even know what I want. How could I possibly tell a child or help a child to figure out what they want? But ever since she's come into our lives, it's been the best decision we've made. And um, she's the ultimate reason why we wanted to do this, because it's like we want her to see us chase something, achieve it, and let her know that she can do the same thing. Right. So you've got your telephone data now. Yeah. Knowing the prosecutor will demand hard evidence, Sarah and Richmond are going through the phone records. So should we start with Alicia, then? Yeah, go on. So, moving on to, to, to kind of the, the, the recent tragedy that, that's happened uh, surrounding Charlie. Um, obviously, Logan's your, your son. Would you be, were, were her and Logan friends? Obviously, kind of, she was coming on holiday as a child and, and her no, and Logan no, might no, have been no. similar age, so... No. No? Not that I'm aware of. Um, right. She wasn't somebody mentioned in the house, no. particularly. Would you ever kind of visit Charlie at the Manx? No. I've not been there in years. Can you just go to Logan for me, please? Who's number 0728? That's probably his mum. That's Freddie Forrester texting him. What? Saying, I may have a job for you, call me. And he says, At night I may have a job for you, call me. Would you remember what Logan were wearing on the, the evening of the meeting? Logan, I couldn't tell you what Logan was wearing, I'm sorry. OK. I realise he lives here. Are you in a position that you'd be able to at least show us his room, maybe, and show us what he was likely to be wearing? No. Logan mentioned to us that he often at home will bring some of his fishing gear back and comes with his knife and does a bit of gutting and things. Where would that happen? We're not going to get much further on today. Unless you have a warrant or something for that, then that's not going to happen today. So we probably would be as well wrapping things up. No, that's, that's completely understood. Um, that's not a problem, yeah. Mrs. Corey. No, th thank you for, for your time. Don't tell your mum where you are going. Play a bit of pool and I might even have some eye candy to play with. Who's that from? That's Freddie. Freddie? That's Freddie. It's a Logan. Swing by my gaff. So he's her, so Freddie. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Yeah, because please. This is just too. This is okay. So this is Freddie. Save this number, and then he is asking and him catch anything today. Well, obviously, Fre Freddie and Logan have something going on here. Also, we know that he's got this somewhat infatuation with Charlie by peering inside her window. Yeah. Um, his footprints were found at the address, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think I can focus on Freddie and Logan, because at this point, they're looking more and more, like, suspicious. Plot thickens. Whilst you've been hard at work trying to solve this case, we've managed to track down Charlie Hendricks' dad, and he has provided us with some information after we chatted to him earlier. And I want you to watch it and look at the detail and listen hard, OK? Thank you for joining us today. Firstly, can I just say on behalf of our team how sorry we are for your loss. It's devastated the community here, and I can't imagine uh, what you must be going through in your family. Thank you. OK, so a few questions, if that's OK, for you to start with. What kind of person was Charlie? How would you describe her? I don't know if this is important, but she, we adopted her when she was three. She, she knew she was loved, but I think um, that caused her to struggle in some ways. Before she came to the island, what, what, kind, of, what kind of person was she within relationships? Her last relationship was with... Uh, a woman called Terry. 
That was a serious relationship. And um, they were talking about IVF. So um, I knew she was thinking about having a baby. OK. Did you give her any financial support to her at all? Can you remember the last time you gave her any money or any gifts? Any gifts? We had a thing, it wasn't a gift exactly, but um, we had an old um, uh, dictaphone to, to record messages on. And um, we used to have fun with that when she was young. You have to tell me. All I can tell you is the place is magical. It's the most magical place in the world. And she'd record messages for me and sing songs and, and um, record the sounds at the beach. Um, OK. Is that one that had little tapes in it, or...? Yes, it was little tapes. OK. Yeah. We haven't found that yet, but thank you very much, because that's a really useful bit of information that, um, right. you know, could really help our inquiry. Could you tell me, what, what connection does Charlie have to this island? We, we, we went on family holidays uh, when she was young. Um, her show was very... Held, held a, a special place. You know, I've never seen her happier um, than when we were on the island. Actually, there was a... She sent me a postcard just six days ago. She was thinking about me because uh, she was on the South Beach and that was her favourite place, looking for crabs when she was young. It would be really handy for us to well, see yeah. that postcard, if that was possible. I've got a few postcards. Um, actually, the one before that was from Harsha five years ago, and that was... Um, I remember it because she mentioned um, someone had died, uh, a fisherman, and... but. Uh, she said that the atmosphere on the island had changed and was strange. So was she, was she was here in five years ago when somebody died on the island. That's what you're... Yes. ..that you send a postcard. Yes. As I say, I, I have these postcards somewhere if you would like them. That would be... They would be really useful and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Like, you know, us being parents ourselves, that's, that it was, it resonated to me. Like, yeah. he just wanted his it daughter was... to be happy. She was going through, like, you know, she had a conversation with her dad about IVF. Mm -hmm. So now that sort of eliminates that whole, oh, um... Potential, potential actual, father, potential who's father, the father yeah. sort of thing. Should we have a quick look at these postcards, then? See what you think. Let's have a look. Lots of pictures of her at, down at South Beach. So that was obviously quite a significant place for her to visit. Hi, Dad. I'm back on Hirsha and thinking of you. Strange visit this time. Gregor died. Remember him? He was one of the fishermen. He drowned. It feels weird, something strange about the whole thing. Maybe it's nothing. Anyway, we'd love to see you soon. I love this time of day. The light's perfect. I think you love it because it's quiet. You're probably right. Remember when you were little, we used to bring you down here every day, wait for your dad to come in. Rain or shine, we'd be here. Right. I was too young to remember that. Oh, Christ, what does she want now? Swanning around here like she owns the place. How are you doing, Lance? I told Logan, I thought I might just have a quick word with him. I don't think so, he's working. Right, it's just, um, I heard that the land's in his name and that he's thinking about selling. You hear a lot. I just can't 
bear to think of this place changing. Mm. You're right on that. Enjoy your swim. Get her up the road, Logan. Right, come on home. Mm. Come on. Tony. It's her and Gregor's 20th wedding anniversary. Right, come on. Come on, home. Come on. Sorry, Tony. Shame on you, Jean Gaudi. Whatever happened to death just part. Come on. I'll uh, lead this one and um, try and kind of be a little bit more empathetic. Yeah. Hopefully he will want to talk to us. I'm, you know, we're both blokes. Like Logan. Hi, Logan. How you doing? Uh, my name's Andrew and this is Nick. Yeah, yeah. How are you? You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, eh? Sorry, I thought that's getting your way. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. yeah, we just wanted to stop by. It's, it's, it's just we kind of had some, some information today that five years ago there was a, a death of a, a fisherman called Gregor. Would you be able to give us a bit of an expansion on the gap of our knowledge of that? Do you know anything else about that? Well, he was my father, so... Was he? Yeah. Oh, we weren't aware of that. Apologies. No, I'm really, really genuinely sorry to hear that. We had no idea he was, he was your father. That must have been devastating for you, was it? Well, it wasn't great, no. Yeah. And I'm sure he'd be very proud of you, obviously, being a fisherman and, and following yeah. in his footsteps. With things like this, of course, we understand it's difficult to talk about. Um, what happened to Gregor, if you don't mind me asking? He drowned at sea. Um, how old was um, Logan when that happened? Um, 15. Mm. It must have been, of course, very tough for you, you know, losing your husband, which I'm very sorry uh, to hear about. It's five years gone. It's, um... You just take each day and move on, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, did he have... Um, any friends? I know you mentioned he was a fisherman. No, he wasn't close with anyone. I mean, he drank in the pub, but uh, he was a very, um, I don't know, I guess a little bit like Logan, just a bit of a solitary man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, when you say he drank in the pub, you know, was that just socially or did he drink more regularly? He drank a lot. He was a heavy drinker, I would say. Of course, I know, I understand that it's really difficult to talk about, but how did that affect you in terms of his drinking? Have you ever been around somebody who has a problem with alcohol? You try yeah. to avoid situations and triggers. Um, so I mostly kept out his way. There was nothing new with Gregor. My, my father before him was a heavy drinker. And what was it that happened to him? Just because we were a bit in the dark of, of kind and of... He went missing out at sea. Right. Over the side of his boat. OK. And was there anything kind of suspicious about that? <laughs> Aye. So how are you finding out about this then, are you? Yeah, well, it, it was something that we'd heard from kind of the, the island that... that we'd read that Gregor had, had kind of sadly died. And they told you to come and speak to me about him? No, no, not at all. We Just had, coming in to drop no in idea. and ask you about your dead dad, how does yeah. it feel? No, apologies, Logan. We really, we really had no idea that that was the case. Yeah. Um, so um, I just really want to clarify about the day before the, um, the murder occurred. Take yourself back one day before that, and you didn't see Charlie that day? I, not, that I, not that I recall, no. Not walked anywhere together or anything like that. I was never together with Charlie. No. No. Okay. Often, 
people come back to me and say, oh, I can swear he was lying, you know, the way he was moving, the way he was talking. The answer is simple. We'll back it up with a fact. You have to back it up with a fact because you might believe he's lying, but can you prove he's lying? Morning, teams. Morning. At HQ, Parham believes she's found a way to challenge the two remaining teams. We have been discussing the case and reviewing the latest evidence given to us by Charlie's dad. We believe that there may be valuable information on the dictaphone. Charlie's dad was suggesting that that dictaphone is almost used a little bit like her diary. So why, why haven't we found it? Where is that dictaphone? Why has it disappeared? Did the killer take it? Or has Charlie hidden it somewhere? Looking at Charlie's diary, is there a clue inside the diary? Why is there a page missing? Think about the people closest to Charlie and if they can help you. You've been investigating this for over a week now and you still don't have the answers. Go back, find that dictaphone and then come back to HQ. Thank you. Thank you. Nice one. Thanks, Rob. Hopefully, we're still here tomorrow. Let's get back in and... Um, what are we going to do first? Search the house? I reckon we go and try and turn the house upside down and try and find this dictaphone and things. I think it'll give us more ammo if we do then go speak to Jean. I just don't think Jean's going to... Like, I get the feeling their relationship, while intimate, I don't think she knows all Charlie's deepest, darkest yeah. secrets. Going to see Jean. I just hope Jean could confirm that the dictaphone was something that she's seen Charlie with. Yep. So that way we know that we're not going around looking like... Headless chickens. Yeah. Hello, Jean. Hi. How are you? I'm all right, yeah. Uh, we just wanted to come here and give you some comfort, um, actually. We've come to find out um, a little bit about, you know, uh, Charlie's pregnancy, and we wanted you to just... Um, you know, find comfort in knowing that it wasn't anybody that she was seeing um, while she was seeing you. Hang on a second. She wasn't seeing anyone on the island? Um, not to our knowledge. Um, we know that from a previous relationship, um, she was sort of speaking, having an idea of IVF. With who? Um, we're not sure, but we just felt that, you know, it was some, something that you were a bit worried about. From what we found so far, she really enjoyed the time that she spent with you. She even describes him as some of the best moments on this island. So we just thought we'd bring you, yeah, she really did. And um, we just thought that would bring you some comfort to reassure you that you definitely weren't a rebound of any sort, that she really genuinely cared about you. It's good to know. No, of course. So take your time, take your time, just process it in. It's all right. Take your time. Hi, right, gents. Got clear instructions from the boss uh, there, so you come here to the manse to have a look around. It's your scene now, so uh, off you go. Cool. Cool. I'll maybe take the kitchen, you take and I'll do the, the bedroom. bedroom. Just give me a shout if you find anything. Will do. You... I'm thinking that the dictaphone is going to be somewhere in the bedroom because it was something that was really a prized possession of hers. So, yeah, I mean, this is really important. If the other team find it and we don't, that'd be a real shitter. While we're here, Jean, we believe that there may be something that Charlie owned that may be of really great value and quite vital to our um, investigation. Um, a dictaphone. I'm not sure if you've um, ever seen Charlie with anything like that. Yes, this old thing, it was her dad's. Do you know where Charlie would usually keep it? I don't know, she had it off and on her. Like, I, I don't know if she kept it anywhere special. OK. Um, do you remember the last time that you may have seen her with it? <sighs> not really. She often had it when we were out and about. She records stuff on it, bird sound and stuff. I mean, I'm hoping, you know, dictaphone is quite big, like it's the size of a mobile phone, right? So I'm hoping it would stick out. If I was the victim, where would I hide the where dictaphone? You, what have you done? Think, think. In here. 
done a full search. Okay, I'll um, just quickly do a quick left start, to right then. And I'll switch over and have a look in the kitchen, will I? Yeah. Has Charlie maybe um, ever mentioned, you know, that she had a particular place where she would, you know, sort of keep things that meant uh, a lot to her? Not, not really. I mean, she had places she liked to go. We used to spend some time on the South Beach. She used to go there a lot with her dad when she was younger, so... It was a little place we used to sit on this rock and hang out there and watch the sunset together and watch the stars come out. It was gorgeous. Nice. And Charlie she... loved it there. Oh, it sounds very beautiful. Do you have any sort of, like, memories of that? Did you guys take pictures, things like that? Yeah, Charlie was always taking pictures. And did she um, give you any of these? Uh, yeah. She... Uh, this is probably the last time we were down there together. Uh, we used to sit up there, smile around that rock. <laughs> Do you mind if we can um, take, take this now. with us? Um, we'll bring it back. We know that it's of really great importance to you, but it could, um, you know, help us during our investigation. OK. Thank you very much. All right, so what did we get? Well, she mentioned the South Beach, uh, particularly by the rocks, yeah. to which we took a picture of. That was really good. Um, one of the things, I love that empathy with talking about the, the IVF thing, you know, so you'd often get permission to say something as personal as that, and I think you would have done from yeah. your SIO to say, just give us some... And I thought the way you delivered that was really good, so well done, which we did that. Yeah. really difficult this it's like trying to put yourself in the mindset of someone and, and where they would keep something but the time is not on our side really I mean it could be a case that the dictaphone is is maybe not even in the house but what are we looking for, looking for a dictaphone. dictaphone yeah uh, Jean gave you that image, where's the best place to start? Definitely looking at the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like this area. This area. What's that? Some ah. nicotine things. Nothing up there? Nothing. That would have been good if that was there, wouldn't it? That would have been brilliant. Right, keep going. She was either stood on this, this side here, you know that rock that's here? Then you've got this bit there. You got it? No, no, I'm saying so far I've not got anything. No, me neither. Uh, find. Andrew. Find. Yeah. I think I've got the diary page, mate. Right. We've well, we got a... Yeah, I think we've got a few photos. Good find. Right? Good find on that, Nick. A picture of, like, a rock. It must be her favourite beach, maybe. What it does do is, it, I guess, it gives us a clue as to where we need to look next. Maybe this is a significant spot for Charlie. To me, potentially, it looks like South Beach. And her dad did mention that, didn't he? Mm. Sarah! Rich! Fine! Oh, I think she's found something. She? Mm, I think so. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> what a find! Where was it? Wait. <laughs> oh my gosh! Right, right, right. right. Oh. <laughs> well done. That's yeah. a brilliant find. That's a great find. Well done. Just try. You done it? Well All right. Done. Put your pocket in. So I think up by the rocks, it looks like they found the dictaphone. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, I've got to bring the killer to justice, so whatever it takes. Thank you, teams, for your hard work and your commitment over the last week. You have all worked incredibly hard. We have come to a decision about which team is going to remain on the investigation. Nick and Andrew, your professionalism, the way that you present yourselves is absolutely fantastic. You really do work together. 
Sarah and Richmond, your empathy, your, the ability to be so analytical with your approaches and the way that you build rapport is brilliant. This island has got some complicated relationships. One of the biggest skill areas that we need on this investigation is the ability to build empathy and rapport. And we feel that the team that can demonstrate those skills is the team that needs to stay on the investigation. Sarah and Richmond, you are remaining on the investigation. Please stand by for further instructions. Nick and Andrew, I'm so sorry because you are so good. You have worked really hard and you should be proud of yourselves. But unfortunately, we can only take one team forward. So thank you so much for your hard work and your commitment. Thank you thank very you. much. All right. Thanks. Well I'm sure we would have loved to have been the ones to go through, but it wasn't meant to be. We know that we worked really hard, so hats off to Sarah and Richmond. Yeah. They 100% must have worked incredibly hard. For me, one of the biggest things was the last part. Nick and Andrew went for the gold, which was they thought the dictaphone was at the house. Sarah Richmond did the analytical, detailed approach to think, well, I'm not going there until I know that it's going to be there or there's something else I might find there. So they went and did the Gene interview first. That was the winning part for me. Congratulations, you two. This is where the hard work's really going to start for you because it's not over yet. You have to catch the killer. To claim the £50,000 reward, Sarah and Richmond have to do more than just name my killer. They have to make a case strong enough for the prosecutor to take to court. Getting ready to go out there and get our brains working. Yeah. It's going to be so different once I'm back home. And then go back to a busy, busy London lifestyle. Yeah. I didn't even know that like, this part of the world existed. Mm -hmm. Richmond had a heart attack while playing football. It was a very, very tough time, obviously, for the both of us. But I think for him, particularly, it was harder because, you know, it happened while he was doing something that he loved. Uh, I was very down once I came out of hospital, and I um, I suffered with something that I've recently found out was um, survivor's guilt. So I really, really struggled with why, why I didn't end up dying that night, or why am I still here? Being on the island and um, being on this journey has been one of the best things to happen to me in so long. Um, I catch myself waking up, jumping out of bed every day, ready to attack the day, ready to see what we've got in store, ready to see how we can get closer to cracking the case. And it's just given me a new lease of life. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just very, very glad that we took, the, we took the opportunity to come on this journey, definitely. You ready? Let's go. I'm going to play the message from this dictaphone now so that we can all listen to it together. You all right, Logan? I just wondered if you'd had a chance to have a think about what you're going to do with your land. I think I'll do whatever I want with my own land. See, I think you're about to make a big mistake. <laughs> you don't know anything about this, right? You don't know who I am. I know you're a silly little boy who's desperate to make a quick bit of cash without giving any consideration for anybody else on this island. You just love the sound of your own voice, don't you? <laughs> Having a go at anyone who crosses your path, you're not going to get a rise out of me. Is that right? I saw you, Logan. I saw what you and your mum did on the boat that night. What night? That night. Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what no? you're talking about. How about I jog your memory then? See, I, I don't know if you know this, but I've been coming up to the island for quite a few years now and got a cracking little camping spot right down on the south end of the island, right next to where you and your dad launched your boat from. See, I was here about five years ago and saw you and your mum dragging something. Out of the car, 
molding it onto two bolts and then coming back with one. And what is it exactly that you think you know? Your mum, God, she gets a bit mouthy after she's had a few gins, doesn't she? She really helped piece it all together the other night in the pub. You know, you just leave me and my mother alone, all right? I don't know what you were smoking that night, but you're imagining things. Yeah, well, your business is going to count for shit when people realise it's run by a murderer. It was a piece of shit who was at us all the time. You pushed me down the fucking stairs because I stood up to him once. And we got rid of him because we're not having that hanging over us the rest of our lives. So you go and tell whoever you want because nobody is going to believe you. Do you know what, Logan? Hats off to you. It sounds like you did the right thing. And you're going to do the right thing now. You're not going to sell that fucking land. And if you do, this is going straight to the police. Leave me and my mother alone. Thanks, Logan. Appreciate it. Well, talk about scandal. Did you hear? You two were carrying a... something heavy. Exactly, I saw you that night. <sighs> that one said, I don't know what, we didn't kill him. It's like, oh, we were doing everybody a favour, getting rid of him. Exactly. He actually he basically that said away. that, yeah, me and my mum did this, that, we did that. We did that shit, <laughs> we killed my dad. And you was asked. Pushed me down the stairs. We don't have enough on Ishbel. We just have, like, word of mouth. We, have a, mm. we got Logan on the dictaphone. Yep. We've got his um, DNA footprints and fingerprints yeah. at the manse. Yep. And obviously, he's heard he's on tape. Yes, he knows that, yeah. There's a tape. Yeah. And he would obviously go there and retrieve it and then go and hide it. Logan admits on the tape that he was involved in his father's death but it proves nothing about my murder. What Logan says on that recording is, is interesting, it's fascinating. It gives a bit more context to what might be happening, but it's not enough to say that Logan has killed anybody. So what are they going to do with that bit of information? As the focus is now drawn on Logan and Ishbel, you are getting building blocks here of information that's, that's building towards a sufficiency of evidence. What I would like to see them bringing to me is, first of all, I would like a timeline. I need to listen to the beginning of that recording because then that will make me understand. You all right, Logan? Mm. If there was a bell at the beginning of it... It must have been at the post office when you close the door open. And... Right. They're by the post office. Mm. So this is shortly... This is when the conversation happened. After hearing a bell on the recording, Sarah and Richmond are heading to the village shop. So, obviously, this is where I believe Logan was seen by Charlie. Mm -hmm. Maybe she sort of peeped through the window and saw Logan um, and then probably waited for him to come out, got her dictaphone out and sort of walked around here and pressed record. It's like from the recording here... And that's the bell we heard. Yeah, that's yeah. the bell. And the post office got a bell when you open and, you know, open the we, door. We heard that bell when we went to see Jean yesterday. Right. So he's walked out and then they probably... Oh, yeah, yeah, she's probably walked with him down here. We've got the CCTV just showing here. here yeah. Maybe it's captured them walking, like, from here now. Um, we will, of course, want to have a look at that. Um, the CCTV that you're after has come through. If you, um, I'll let you do it, but if you plug it into your PC there. Look at this. 
day before. Murder. We were on the right track we all were along. On the right track. I think this could have been a, just as a leader. I think. Yeah. Like she's about to speak to him about yeah. it. Yeah. And then she just said, "You're a murderer. You murdered your dad." I've got this. Remember the phone call that I saw on the the call log that he was on the phone to his to mum his for like 14 minutes. Yeah. Every other conversation was been quick. short, yeah. or he misses the call. And this occasion it was, was like long. 14 minutes, and you said it this morning. Oh, the mum texted. The mum texted him at 15:52. Call me. But then he texted her at 16:03 saying, phone me, Mum. She called him back. That's when they had the 14-minute phone call. The conversation is out of the ordinary, so it must have been for something very important, because when they talk, it's normally come, like, two minutes, three-minute conversations. Oh, okay. He's had that conversation, and he's panicking. Mum, she's on, someone's on to us. They must now prepare their best case and present to the prosecutor. She will decide if they have the grounds to make an arrest. The very thing we've got now is a strong enough case against this guy now. At the moment, we would like to bring Logan Corey in. Based on the information we've heard on the dictaphone, um, Charlie has accused Logan and Ishbel of murdering his father at sea. Charlie has made it clear that she had seen them and made Logan aware that the conversation they were having was being recorded on this dictaphone. Um, Charlie was uh, using this as leverage um, for him not to sell his land, to which, of course, Logan wasn't too happy. The evidence um, that we found at the manse that is linked to Logan Corey are the partial footwear marks um, at the rear door and the greasy handprint marks from outside the kitchen window. We also have um, CCTV footage of Logan and um, Charlie, our victim, having a conversation on the 13th of May at 15.54. This could have potentially been the conversation that was recorded on the dictaphone. It was sh shortly after that, we had the phone records. Can you tell me what the phone records told you about? We've noticed um, two text messages from Logan to his mum initially, um, asking her to call him. She's then called him back. Yeah. And, and they were on the phone, they were on the for, 14 phone for 14 minutes. minutes. Which has stood out to us because prior to this, when they did speak on the phone, it was for two, three minutes at a time. So you believe that the timing of the call is important yes. and you also believe that the amount of time is important? So you want to go and arrest? You're arresting them for...? The suspicion of being involved in the murder of Charlie Hendricks. Also um, requesting for a search warrant, we'd like to seize his footwear as well so we can make up a match-up of his footwear with the markings. OK. Thank you both. Thank you um, pop back in your offices and we'll come back to you. Thank you, Mum. OK. I like the fact that they were focusing on the evidence mm -hmm. and they weren't overreaching. Richmond had identified that the telephone call, 14 minutes, yes. was out of the ordinary and it was so close in time to after yeah. the conversation that was had. That, that would be important, I think, for a, a jury to hear that such a conversation would have been out of the ordinary. It, it gives it a significance. <laughs> So, try and do him first. Let's get him secure, OK? If Mum does anything, I'll take care of Mum, OK? Yes, sir. Let's go for it. There's a tactic of arresting two people at the same time. Um, it, it can build up the pressure, and then one person won't know what the other person's saying. Certainly where you've got a mother and son, um, that, that tactic can work, because at the end of the day, mums will protect sons, won't they? So um, that's a very strong tactic to use. Hi, Ishbel. Detective Sarah, Detective Rich, thank you remember us. Um, is it possible to have a word with you and Logan, please? Mm. Logan? Yeah, is Logan home? Yeah, Logan's home. Get Logan so we can explain further our reasons for being here. Is 
Is it possible to step outside, both of you, please? What's this about? We'll let you know once you're outside, please. Logan Corey, I am arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Charlie Hendricks and Gregor Corey. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Yeah. Ishbel Corey, I am arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Charlie Hendricks and Gregor Corey. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? I understand. Thank you. I love you, Logan. Please follow me. So, just... It's going to be all right, eh? On, it's fine, just don't... Did Logan or his mum murder me? Or was it someone else that night? <sighs> Are Sarah and Richmond good enough to solve this crime? There's a pressure like that on my kind, which is emotional. I personally don't think that was. To find the evidence the prosecutor needs. Do I think there's a sufficiency of evidence? I wanted it to come much more smoother than mine. And claim the £50,000 reward. Mm -hmm.